most controversial videos that I've ever done would have to be the Quran challenge. It's beginning to get really boring. It's like whoever wants to get famous or make a name for themselves, the first thing they do is go ahead and make a video on YouTube about the evil side of Islam or the evil prophet of war. Islam, the religion of peace. Allah Akbar! And I understand that you're a minority and there's not that many people like you that are as ignorant and as close-minded as you are. And I could let the dislikes do the talking for me, but um, just in case anyone takes you a bit too seriously, I think it's best that I educate the people. Jesus versus Muhammad. Peace be upon them both. Because both of them are prophets of Islam and for that reason I will respect both because they were the best of men to walk this earth. In regards to your first allegation of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, marrying a minor, all I can say is that Islam is the only religion to actually prohibit the marriage of minors who have not reached the age of puberty. The truth is, in different times, in different places, in different contexts, the age for marriage varies. Even in US states, you have states that allow 13, 14 and 15. What age do you recommend? It varies. And since this is Jesus versus Muhammad, let's compare it to the context of Jesus. With none other than the best of women to have walked this earth, Mary, the mother of Jesus. She got married to Joseph, who was 90 years old when she was only 12 years old. You have to understand there is absolutely nothing wrong with this because at different contexts, in different times, in different places, people mature and develop differently. You cannot simply compare the time and place of Muhammad, peace be upon him, to the time and place we're living today. Today we have iPhones and air conditioners and electric heaters, while in the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were living in the middle of the desert. You cannot simply compare the two. And another really important thing to note is that Muhammad, peace be upon him, has been criticized ever since the time of prophethood for an entire 1400 years. But it wasn't until 1905 that the issue of his marriage with Aisha actually became an issue. Why is this? Because it was an absolute norm. They had developed faster, matured faster, and weren't like the woman of today. The next issue of multiple wives you brought up. Firstly, read your Bible. Abraham, how many wives did he have? Two. Sarah and Hajar. Prophet Solomon, 700 wives and 300 concubines. The issue of multiple wives is a famous criticism, but if you were to put the pieces to the puzzle, they don't really match. If Muhammad, peace be upon him, wanted all these wives to fulfill his own desires, it doesn't really make sense when the tribe of his time offered him the best of women, the most beautiful and fancy of women, but he rejected them. It really doesn't make any sense. It's also important to note that out of all of his wives, all of them were ex-divorcees or widows except for one. This is not a man who was chasing after his desires as you make him out to look like. It's a man who cares about women that will be left with no other man to take care of them. It's a man who cares about the importance of community, the importance of looking after one another. And also a very important thing to note is that Islam actually prohibits the marriage to more than one wife. If you are incapable of catering physically, financially and mentally to more than one wife, you are prohibited. And even still, if you are capable, you have the financial means and you are physically capable to cater for more than one woman, you are prohibited if you do not know how to deal justly with them. And since you brought up the issue of adultery, I'm just going to let you know that 30 to 60% of couples in the US actually fall into infidelity and adultery. You are not. <laughs> I think you should have a problem with the actual issue of adultery in itself. I mean, Tiger Woods' wife ran after him with some golf clubs. What does that say? And the actual punishment for adultery in Islam has rarely ever been implemented due to the sheer amount of evidence needed to prove a case of adultery. On so many instances, a man would come to Prophet Muhammad and would say, I have committed adultery. Prophet Muhammad said, get away from me. You're a madman. Something is wrong with you. The same man came back. He said, I have committed adultery. I want to get the punishment so I can purify myself. The whole purpose of the punishment of adultery isn't to punish people. It is to deter them away from the issue of adultery. So if they knew such a punishment existed, they would run away from it. Another thing you mentioned, Jihad. And as much as you say that the Bible doesn't have verses on Jihad. After church today, pull out your Bible and look up Psalm 137. And you'll see that our own text has passages that can make us uncomfortable. 
and Islam teaches jihad too, and we don't shy away from it. Contrary to what you said, war waging Muhammad, having never been tortured or persecuted, to the <laughs> we were persecuted. The companions of Muhammad were tortured severely. Sumayya, a female companion of Muhammad, peace be upon him, had a spear driven through her private part simply because she believed in Allah, believed in the one God, Bilal, the first black man to accept the message of Islam. He was an Ethiopian slave. He accepted the message of Islam and he was given rights at a time where there were no rights for his people. He was tortured for this. Even in USA, these people weren't even given rights until 100 years ago. Black people weren't even considered human beings. After many years of forbearance, after many years of persecution, after many years of torture, finally Allah had given permission to Muhammad to fight. Sure, we can give him the other cheek, but that would only result in a whole lot of dead Muslims. So Islam gave him the right to stand up for yourself. As it says in the Quran, fight for the sake of the oppressed from the men, women and children. And Islam even made responsibility on everyone participating in war. You do not hurt the trees, you do not hurt the elderly, the children, the women. Where are your ethics of war like we have ethics of war? I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> the children in Libya cannot even turn the other cheek because their cheeks blown off from your drones. And lastly, you wanted to talk about his death. Yes, his final words were, do not turn my grave into a place of worship. Because he didn't want people to start worshipping him. Because the message of Islam was never to turn Muhammad into a god or praise him excessively. When Muhammad, peace be upon him, died, the companions couldn't walk. They couldn't speak. They couldn't talk with one another. They were so shattered. Some of them had to deny that he was even dead because they couldn't believe it. It was too much for them to grasp. And you want to come out and make a mockery out of his death. Shame on you. In our religion, it is prohibited, 100% prohibited to make a mockery out of anyone else's belief. And you want to make a mockery out of ours. Shows what values you have. And everyone else that had to watch this video, I'm sorry we had to go through this. But we really have to show the world who Muhammad, peace be upon him, really was. He was nothing like what they say. Rather, he was the best of men to walk this earth. And if you read his book for yourself, read his life, read his sirah, you would see for yourself what kind of man Muhammad, peace be upon him, was. Thank you.